So, Hare Krishna, thank you for joining today. And uh, today we'll discuss on the topic of is the world a stage? So, would you like to start the discussion? Then I'll follow. Uh, yes. Uh, the first thing which comes to my mind when we think of the world as stage is uh, this quote from Shakespeare that all the world's a stage and everybody is merely an actor. We play our roles and then we take a bow and we leave. So stage means a drama. Drama means somebody putting on a makeup and the makeup defines uh, that person's role in the drama. So a magistrate has his makeup, a chief has his makeup, a cook has his makeup, a princess has her makeup. So I am very attracted to this uh, understanding of uh, spiritual progress and the highest point of spiritual progress being a very powerful and popular word, moksha, especially yoga, people talk of moksha. And uh, I think in India, general mass, even when they see you doing your spiritual practices, they ask, are you doing it for moksha? Are you doing it for mukti? So liberation from this makeup, whatever I have taken as a disguise, is for me um, like the real understanding of how do I, uh, later I, when I progress in my kind of pursuit of knowledge, who was I originally? Number one, how did I take this makeup? And then how do I give it up? Hmm. So, I would uh, like your comments on this thing that uh, if the world's a stage and then we have our roles, so how long should we play? When do we take a bow? Or when do we say enough is enough? Hmm. Maybe you could shed some light on that. Yeah. You know, taking one step backward, okay. maybe we could need, maybe we need to examine why we would consider the world to be a stage. Now then it's uh, uh, three senses come to my mind for that. One is that on a stage, whatever happens is temporary. Right. There might be one play going on at one time and then you go a few hours later, a completely different play is going on. So like that, if we especially think of the world's history, in long term, there is a curious aspect about time that we are often conscious of time in terms of minutes and hours, but we are not so much conscious of time in terms of years and decades or certainly not centuries. So what happens is that in the big picture, say if we consider uh, presently America is considered to be the world's most uh, powerful country. Of course, that may change soon. But still, if we consider America at just a few hundred years old, if we consider in that sense, if somebody had a time machine and they went 500 years behind, uh, well, probably America would be completely different from what it is now. And in some ways, in many ways, it would apply to India also. Although India is among the few, if not only, living civilization that goes back into antiquity. But still, the point is that entire civilizations can disappear or can completely be transformed or be significantly revamped. So in that sense, the temporality is one indication that this is a stage. Another way we could understand that this is a stage is that even during our lives, we have certain roles to play and those roles can change at any moment. One of my friends uh, has done his, uh, his psychology doctorate. So he's done his psychology in the, his, his PhD in the post-celebrity, post, 
post celebrity lives of celebrities so somebody is a sports star or a movie star when they retire what happens to them so it's they have to create a new identity for themselves otherwise they just can't function in life they are used to that fame and adulation and performance and then their body just betrays them so when the body betrays them what do they do so in that sense also within our life span we get certain roles to play at certain times that so we could say at one level the world is itself a stage and everything in that stage changes over a period of time but mm-hmm. the world is a stage in the sense that we sometimes get some podiums some uh, some some perfor- platforms for performing and sometimes it's a big platform sometimes it's a small platform and it keeps changing and so that is once now in a practical sense some people are performers they go on the stage or they go on the dais they go on the pulpit and they speak or perform whatever but beyond that the world is a stage in that sense also and now uh, we could look at it from a spiritual perspective as you as you said that um, if there is a stage is there some life beyond this so but these are true thoughts i had about in what sense we can call the world a stage uh, do you have any other thoughts about this yeah i like your points about uh, the world being temporary the stage being temporary and all uh, being temporary uh, you hinted at one or two more things maybe you can take that later uh, just uh, carrying forward from what you said what do we do if we don't like our lines like an actor doesn't like his lines and he always feels that others have a better line or somebody has uh, the clincher or the the climax of your end i would like to bring this to the connect to the to connect this with arjun dashing warrior trained archer Beautiful. yeah and saying i'm giving up my lines i don't want to play the role of a warrior that's an excellent example yeah so we could say that when arjuna says that i just don't see any future for nahi prapashyami mama panudyad चोक मुच्चोषण इंद्रियाणाम so in some ways we could say that our role is basically about two things who we think we are and what we are meant to do and uh, then if either of these or worse if both of these become unpalatable then that is when we have what could be called as a identity crisis mm. and uh, at this time when we have identity crisis so that is actually an opportunity uh, nowadays the concept of identity is often thought of as multi level or multi form so we all have say we have identities as males we have identity as monks we have identity as indians we have identity as say maharashtrians we have identity as uh, engineers or uh, management graduates or whatever so we have multiple identities so the identities can be multiple at the same level and they can also be multi level multiple at the same level means at functional level i might be a manager i might be a speaker i might be author but multi level also means that i have deeper level of investment or emotional uh, emotional investment we could say with certain identities and less with certain identities so those identities which we deeply identify with though or those roles with which we deeply identify now when there is any disturbance in that that becomes 
unbearable. So, for example, if somebody is they they primarily identify themselves as say software professionals, and if they are fired, who am I? If somebody identifies themselves primarily as parents, and if their children start doing something wrong, they, my whole life is a failure. What am I? So, in some ways. the emotional trauma that we experience because of the events in life is not just because of the events but it's also because of uh, the threat those events pose to our sense of identity and purpose so arjuna felt that he just had no way ahead and nacha shakno me avastha tum bhramati vacha me mana nimittani ch pashyami vipritani keshava i just don't see anything auspicious ahead and that was the identity crisis where he had to look deeper so i talk about multi level and multiple identities but most of the identities are functional identities and the bhagavad gita says that below the functional identity you have a fundamental identity and the functional identities are what are required for our various roles but beyond the roles who are we that is the question that the bhagavad gita addresses and we may not be fighting a battle we may not have to fight against our relatives but still we all face a crisis of identity at times and that is the time when the bhagavad gita's message can resonate most deeply with us can i ask you a question that yeah. uh, people said that uh, and adams can be a bad thing as you said that your uh, you get uh, rattled you get shattered you cannot gather yourself but i have heard often that people saying that crisis also has something good in it how would you like let's say in today's times the lockdown has affected uh, the world economy to the tune of between 3 to 5 trillion dollars oil is now selling at or offered at 17 dollars a barrel and not many takers so if somebody is living a the life of a logistical support software professional where something is produced and it is taken and then they try to find out the the uh, least costly way of transporting whether it is grocery or this or that from one place to another and what if there is no market so doomsday people are already telling people that your your old normal is gone there will be a new normal so this is going to be a big identity shock and what would you say to somebody who is a professional who wakes up after the lockdown is over say in about a two months period and finds that uh, there is nothing for him to do the old way in the old way hmm. so how does one bounce one bounces back that's it's tough if we continue with the stage metaphor we could say that on the stage when the play is being enacted sometimes the play might take a horrible turn where maybe the hero is being beaten the hero is starving the hero is uh, uh, in in pain and misery in agony so we could say that the phase we are going through is like a bad phase in the play so that this is not to deny the reality of the Or, or the gravity of the problem it is also to contextualize it see there are our mind often tends to catastrophize the situations we are in yes life is tough and this is going to as you said a new normal may may in some ways things will be different things will be much much uh we may have to live constrained lives in various physically financially socially for some time that's definitely a change which we will have to make but it could also be that maybe this will this will cut away the superficialities in our life now we all 
get ourselves invested in various things so we emotionally socially physically we get entangled in various things and you know there are necessities then there are things which uh, we we need and there are things which so okay there are things which we need there are things which we want now want is not necessarily a bad thing but we could all, all have a dreams or aspirations but there are also some things which are uh, which are uh, which are so socially created wants oh you should have you should have this kind of uh, clothes you should have this kind of phone you should have this kind of device this kind of devices you should have this kind of fashion so maybe a move toward simple living uh, is what as can come as a positive now i often define simplicity as simplicity means the the unimportant things in our life do not distract us from the important things so simplicity doesn't mean living in poverty simplicity means say for example with respect to food it's important but you know the worry about food is the worry can be because i don't have any food or worry can be because oh i i crave for this food and why am i not getting it it could be just chasing after the tongue's pleasures so either too much or too little uh, then both of them can be a distractor so we all have important things to do in life but in some ways our culture we it is a market economy and not just a market economy it is filled with uh, what are called as lifestyle products with lots of luxuries and we get caught in those things and do we really need those things i read a survey that 90% of the people who buy a new version of a phone they don't use 90% of the new features of that phone so it's more oh i just got a latest phone it's more of a matter of prestige than of any practical use so it could be that you know who we are and what we are meant to do this adversity can help us to reexamine that and cut away the superficialities that we have because of the world's pressure a world's glamorization world's propaganda we have acquired those things we have assumed those things what are your thoughts yeah so i i was just thinking that uh, come back to our favorite warrior arjun he agreed to the identity of a warrior of a prince of somebody who was willing to do battle but he refused the identity of somebody who will kill his guru or who will kill his grandfather and uh, he uses the words that uh, gurun hatwa that they are gurun they are here the word gurun is in the sense of worthy spirit hmm. not just uh, spiritual teachers but and uh, i should be offering them flowers not arrows so the identity is this particular set of people they are worthy and the other set of people they are also worthy of being killed so what krishna does is he puts his uh, identity kind of that box right side up and you know there are right fragile items sense? like refrig there are fr fragile items in a supermarket like ovens okay. or okay. gas ranges and they always have this sign there with a the arrow saying right side up like this is how it should be put up and if you feel any time okay. the arrow is sideways or 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 uh, upside down then you have to take it and put it just the opposite of what you are seeing it ah oh, okay so so krishna's intervention in the world can be seen as a reset button for all identities beautiful dharmasya glani we could say in that sense is a is a distortion of our identity Yeah, so uh, okay yeah, so many years of makeup so many years of accepting roles so many years in the sense so many lifetimes of thinking 
I'll be happy as a bird. Like uh, the internet has a lot of humorous philosophers. You must have heard this. It's the early bird which gets the worm. Heard of yes. this? So the early bird goes out and then it gets a worm. So somebody quipped, it's the early worm who is picked by the bird. So if a worm decides to go out of its hole, a bit too early. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. So for a worm, when the bird comes, you have to actually hide. You cannot go out okay. and start yeah. scoring for food or whatever. Mm. So sometimes we have been the bird. Sometimes we have been the worm. Sometimes we have been exploited. Sometimes we have been the exploiter. We have been victims. We have been perpetrators. And this has the the accumulated data on our real identity it's like layer after layer after layer after layer of so many millions of impressions and we need some like two months ago one devotee introduced me to a cleaner kind of a software which cleans away trash files and bots and all the advertisement things and whatever so, so Krishna, now of course the point is like one, one boy who was arguing with me said, who appointed Krishna in his role as the Lord? As, some, <laughs> <laughs> as, as somebody whose job is to clear away all our misunderstanding. Because uh, I think I uh, were just, we were just discussing Muktir Hitva Anyatha Rupam. I really love this definition. It is not like uh, the Bhagavad Gita advocates you to give up all these uh, uh, makeups and take one more makeup. No, it is very clear. Give up all the extraneous makeup. Like somebody is having a layer after layer of makeup and he, he finds himself under a waterfall. After a mm. thorough cleansing, what is seen is the real person. So uh, let us let us discuss thing. If you have to shed any light on what exactly is that real person, then what would you say? Mm, beautiful. So from the Bhagavad Gita's perspective, as we discussed earlier, that we are souls, we are Atma, and soul is a part of Krishna, is meant to serve Krishna. And if we go deeper, specifically within the Gaudiya Vaishnava tradition. A Gaudiya Vaishnava tradition also has this special contribution that we can play a role of play the role of who we are in the spiritual world. In fact, uh, there's an academic scholar David Haberman. He's written a book on Gaudiya Vaishnava Siddhanta and he titles his book as Acting as a Way of Salvation. And the whole idea of acting as a way of salvation, that's the title of his book. And the idea is within, within the Gaudiya Vaishnava tradition, we have the concept of um, Raganuga Bhakti. Ragatmika and Raganuga are two related terms. The idea is that you know, we play the role of a devotee right now. And we, of course, the, at advanced level, if we have some sense of which particular devotee we are connected with or we are inspired by in the spiritual world, we play that role, but at our level, we could say we play the role of a devotee. In some ways, we may talk about, say, we want to remove the makeup, take out the masks, uh, remove the costumes, but we might feel that when we're practicing bhakti, you know, we put on a tilak, we put on a dress. So as this is not one more thing which we are taking. Well, at one level it is, mm. but this is, we play the role so that we can revive who we are originally. So in a sense, actually I have a whole seminar on how the mind, what is the mind exactly and how are the impressions formed in the mind. So the impressions at one level, when we practice bhakti, what do we do? There are bhakti also forms new impressions. So somebody might be passionate about cricket, somebody might be passionate about politics. So reading all those also forms impressions. Somebody becomes passionate about Krishna, that also forms impressions. So is it just another set of impressions? 
or somebody might get absorbed in uh, in uh, something you know a few years ago or maybe a decade ago or so there was a movie about uh, uh, gandhi ji there was i forget that character if uh, this person started he started practicing gandhi giri he started seeing that i am getting gandhi and gandhi is telling me what would gandhi do in this situation what would gandhi do in that situation and then he started acting in a noble way. he was a he was like a hooligan who turned into a good person so that became almost like a uh, it assumed like some cult following for some time so the idea is that resolve things peacefully but then later on he realized actually there was no gandhi coming it was he had heard and read so much about gandhi that he started imagining that gandhi is there and then he got that guidance by that so so now is is krishna bhakti also like we become obsessed in krishna and then krishna becomes like a creation of our own mind and we see that so is it just one impression and a projection well, at one level it can seem like that but from a philosophical perspective the very fact that we have consciousness means there is a fundamental self so what the bhagavad gita says is that or what the bhakti tradition says broadly speaking is that this at at a functional level it may appear like bhakti is another impression bhakti is another impression we are forming but bhakti it is a impression that we form but as that impression goes beyond the mind to the soul it awakens or activates the soul so it is an outer impression that leads to an inner activation most other outer most other outer impressions will only lead to some projection psychological projections so psychological projection means uh, say somebody loves uh, cricket they may fantasize about cricket players so it's a it's a psychological projection they are projecting it but here it is uh, outer impression may come in but if it reaches the soul then it's not a psychological proje- projection it's a spiritual activation or a spiritual revelation so there is a higher reality and by playing the role of a devotee we start becoming who we are so spirituality is not about giving up who we are or becoming somebody else it is about practicing a set of processes which free us from all the extraneous conditioning around us and then they bring out who we really are so in that sense the practices of bhakti are we accept that the world is a stage we accept that we have to play a role in the stage but we play that role in a mood of service to krishna we practice bhakti i have specific activities in which we directly practice bhakti and our particular roles also we do in a mood of service to krishna and by that our real identity as spiritual being starts becoming awakened activated is it uh, is it this is the reason why a particular radha krishna temple or our own iskon temples have a particular uh, milieu fragrance activities so uh, it wow. came in our back to our magazine many years ago. so now as took up a job in a grocery store and he would not talk about his previous life at all and very nice sober simple clean and it was a small town and then he got married and people thought that either he is a ex convict or a ex priest so <laughs> okay <laughs> in 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 both cases it would be advantages for him to hide his past and then he had a family of his own and one day he bumped his head while doing something at home and suddenly he remembered hey i already have a life and then he remembered his previous town his previous family so for a genuine oh. reason that memory was completely lost so psychologists are very keenly interested in this kind of thing and uh, i remember one of our scholarly devotees uh, writing an article that the sight sound smell taste of a satangram is also to be seen like a uh, like a memory uh, perk or a memory pick me up like you have you have lost your 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 strength is sagging so you take some vitamin c things 
uh, and then that class really invigorates you or gets back your strength. So now we, we don't need to argue about whether uh, uh, give kind of another impression and what makes you say that this is a uh, this is a, this is a real impression or this is this is the real thing. Suffice it to say that there has to be some original impression, right? Hmm. It cannot be like there is no original impression for everybody. I like this classic argument Prabhupada gave that uh, if your definition of Godhead has these uh, six opulences, six qualities, and uh, what if there is someone who is better than Krishna? So the counter argument given was, do you have any candidate? Yes. And the person said, no. So Prabhupada offered. So till you get a better candidate, Krishna is. Yes. That's true. So what you are saying is so that. Let's say that yeah. the, the Mukti Rhit. Yeah, let's finish it. So, yeah, okay. so Mukti Hitva Anatha Rupam. So, Anatha Rupam, all entities have to be dissolved. And Sarupena Vyavasthiti. So, that Sarupa, Krishna begins with a lot of uh, Vedanta style, Neti Neti, not this, not this, not this. So, Arjuna, the soul cannot be cut by any weapon. It cannot be affected by any weapon in your quiver. So, Arjuna basically had. Uh, fire and air weapons. So that's why the definition is uh, kind of bespoke, customized for Arjuna as a warrior. I always feel a little bit humorously that if Arjuna would have been a potter, the sole example would have been given with the potter's wheel and the ingredients taking that in mind. If he would have been a software engineer, it could have been that the soul cannot be coded, the soul cannot be erased <laughs> so uh, yeah, that's beautiful the soul cannot be corrupted by viruses <laughs> yeah oh For the, uh, real identity when he says that <laughs> yeah so that mat karma krit mat paramo that you have to act act for me and that is being instituted in your in inverted commas your real identity beautiful uh, for the point about original impressions maybe yeah. i would prefer to use the word we could say original awareness there has to be some original awareness and based on that, some impressions can happen. And if there is no awareness, there cannot be any impressions which will be processed and which will lead to further actions. One of the classic arguments which I have found for, for refuting the idea that consciousness itself is an illusion, some people say. That consciousness itself is an illusion. Okay, then the question is whose illusion? When you say there is an illusion, there is somebody who is perceiving it to be an illusion. If there is a mirage, if there is somebody is perceiving something to be a mirage, so the mirage is an illusion, but the perceiver of the mirage is not an illusion. The perceiver of the mirage is real and that mirage, what the perception can be an illusion. The, if the perceiver itself is an illusion, then there would be no perception, no perception and no possibility of perception. So there has to be a foundation that is real. So the original, uh, just like a multi-story building, it might all be of a fragile material which collapses in a storm. But it has to be founded on, on solid ground. So similarly, our identity may have multiple layers and levels and many impressions, but we won't have that sense of identity 
if there weren't an weren't a basic a core self uh, original awareness so the even the 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 possible the even if illusion is real or illusory perception is real the perceiver even the perce even the perception is illusory the perceiver needs to be real and in that sense there has to be a original self like prabhupada would say we can all have false egos but there has to be a true ego otherwise how can there be a false ego or so, or as an example that when you see in a mirage your example beautifully example of a mirage that water is illusory it's due to the fact that there has to be some reservoir of water somewhere else okay this is a separate point see there oh, is really? two now i what i'm saying is the two uh, i mean it's a important point is related in an extended point see see i am here and i am perceiving something so now i perceive this to be something else say so this is a mirage okay, the sand but so, i perceive so it to be water see, what i see could be unreal but i am the seer and i am real yes yeah got it got it so so that now, now but your point is also important that uh, we could connect it this way that firstly that we if the world is a stage then we all are players on it but the players also have a real life beyond the stage so in the world is a stage we have a real life and so we have a real identity and a real life and also what is depicted in the play we could say the play is an elaborate illusion but what is depicted in the play is based on some reality i read a beautiful definition of fiction uh it said that fiction good fiction is an unreality that helps us to better understand reality <laughs> yes yes <laughs> so good fiction story will tell us so much about the human condition about the human character uh, and human nature and thereby it will help us to learn how to live so similarly uh the play so what do we aspire for most deeply in life we consider our deepest aspirations to love and be loved so the mirage we are thinking that we are forming playing various roles forming various relationships through all these we are trying to be loved and be loved so there is no water in the mirage but water exists somewhere else and similarly uh, the love on the stage that is not enduring but not only do we have an identity outside the stage an original identity but there is also an original love beyond the stage and that original love is for krishna so bhakti is about acting on the stage in such a way that we prepare for the real life beyond the stage so bhakti is about on the stage there can be many objects that can attract our attention and our love but we specifically focus on those objects that connect us with krishna and in that way we so if we say that it's a multi stage it's a multi play drama or multi stage drama or whatever reincarnation is like we go from one play based on the performance in one play we go to the next play then the next play next play next role but the success in this drama is that we end the drama or as we end our role in the drama so in the human form of life if we practice bhakti then what is that mukti hitva anyatha roopam all the roles that are assumed by us anyatha roopam we give them up sva roopena vyavasthiti so we practice living the life of a devotee still that becomes natural for us and when it become natural and when we come out of the stage then we are in the world of reality eternal reality with krishna just to add that in case uh, the makeup man doesn't refuse uh, doesn't uh, want to stop the director doesn't want to stop the actors don't want to stop krishna wants that bhutva uh, bhutva praliyate if you don't give up by nature's own arrangement 
the stage and everything else itself is going to get finished. So when you said we need to end the drama, we need to end it. Even if we get attached to it, one mm. day, the whole thing, of course, it will be created again. But then again, we will have to have our roles and again, we'll have to go through the whole thing. So it's basically a choice of two stages. One is materials where we are attached to roles, makeups or whatever. Or we learn our role, lines, learn our uh, lessons, uh, life beyond this material stage and join Krishna's eternal stage. Beautiful. You know, in the 11th chapter of the Bhagavad Gita, which is the Virat Rupa, in universal form, there is the Kala Rupa and yeah. the destructive form of Krishna. Uh, and there, there are two metaphors. There are Yatha, yatha Pradeeptam Jalanam Patanga and Yatha Nadinam Bahu Vega. Just as a, as a moth goes into the fire and gets burned completely, it says some warriors are entering into the mouth of the universal form, universal form and are, they are like moths going into fire. Yeah. And the other is like rivers going into the ocean. So Vedanta Deshika is a commentator in the Sri Vaishnava tradition, one of the prominent followers of, of Ramacharya. And he gives a beautiful explanation. He says that when the moth enters into the fire, the moth's entire existence is destroyed. Its body is reduced to ashes, its dreams, its life, its everything is ended. So this moth represents people who are attached to their material roles. No, their everything is destroyed at the time of death. On the other hand, he says, when the river moves towards the ocean, when the river reaches the ocean, the river doesn't lose its nature. Rather, the river enters into a bigger body which shares the same nature. Yeah. So like that, those who live dharmically, those who live spiritually, they are like the river moving toward the ocean. And when they get to the ocean, they, they, are, they are living spiritually now. So a moth is, uh, moth just existence ends, but a river's existence, the water that comprises a river, that existence goes on eternally, goes on forever. So similarly, souls who live spiritually, they attain the divine, they attain Krishna, and they unite in love with him. And another thing he says is, a moth's journey to the, uh, to the fire just causes destruction, doesn't do any good. But a river, even when it is flowing toward the ocean, it actually nourishes the land around it. And so many grains and uh, fruits and flowers grow because of that. So similarly, those who live spiritually, during their life journey, whoever they interact with, they do so much good to those people. So their spirituality and their, uh, cult, their consciousness, their character, their culture, it nourishes so many others. And in that sense, both in this life as well as at the end of life, uh, those who play the role of a devotee, those who, those who live devotedly, they benefit others and then they that the role becomes the eternal reality at the end. So death comes upon everyone, but the, but the nature of the death and the destination after death are different. So as you said, the play will end for everyone. But how you play it, how, you, how we play our part, will determine what will happen to us after death. Any concluding thoughts or any thought reflections on this? Nothing comes to my mind right now. I think you nicely included the whole thing. Okay, I just maybe quick, quick recap you will do of what we discussed. Yeah. We, so we started by discussing why the world is like a stage. It's because the world civilizations themselves are temporary and our roles also are temporary, even within this lifetime. Then if, if it's a stage, then uh, what happens when, uh, if what, uh, so how do we understand or uh, what are we meant to do? Is there a reality beyond the stage? You talk of, the Bhagavad Gita says we are souls and the soul goes through uh, various roles in various lifetimes. Uh, the human form and the practice of bhakti is a way by which we can, we can play the role that is original for us. So 
bhakti bhakti is also a role but it is a role which activates the nature of the soul it's not just a psychological projection it's a spiritual revelation and then it talked about how this play is going to end for everyone but depending on how we play our part our destination will be accordingly either we can go on in this play repeatedly or we can come out of the play and go to the original abode of krishna and uh, reality we talk about reality and illusion that this that the perceptions can be an illusion but the perceiver can't be an illusion we can have many many roles but there has to be some foundation beyond it uh, otherwise there is no there is no possible there is no original awareness there cannot be any uh, false awareness also any points i missed out any points you would like to add no we pretty much covered everything okay that's so this was quite a stimulating here. discussion thank you wonderful thank you, thank you. hare krishna